What is the meaning of life? That's the topic we're discussing together at this time on this station each day. What is the meaning of life? Really, why are we alive? Uh, what's the purpose of your being here? How can, come we end up on this planet? What is the meaning of life? And uh, during the past few days, we have tackled some of the answers to that question, which probably you yourself have given at different times. Many of us say, well, that philosophical question is too cosmic an issue for me, but I can tell you why I am alive. I'm alive uh, just to stay alive. That's it. Uh, I haven't got any further than that. And many of us, of course, are in that position where really we don't uh, answer the question philosophically, we just answer it practically and we say, why are we alive? We're alive to stay alive. I'm trying to get a good education, to get a good job, to get food and shelter and clothing so that they can stay alive. That's about it. Uh, I realize that it's uh, an exercise in futility. I'm going to end up dead. I understand that. Finally, the grim river reaper will get me, but uh, I'm going to stay alive as long as I can until that time. And, of course, that's what causes a lot of us, the angst that we feel away at the back of our minds, and it causes the sense of worry and defeat that we see in each other's eyes away at the back when we look there. We find that many of us are really living what we see as a tale told by an idiot because we're trying to stay alive just to stay alive. And we know that we're better than animals. We know that we have a reflective, self-critical faculty, but still we are behaving like little animals. We're just eating because the food is there. We're climbing the mountain because it's there. We're staying alive because it's there. And we don't seem able to get beyond that. Others of us, of course, have a different answer. We say, well, we don't know why we're alive, but there are four billion others in the world, and they probably feel the same way as we do. We feel we're pretty unique. It is interesting. Most of us feel we're unique. Most of us feel in some way we're different from everybody else. And the truth is, actually, you are. There's nobody quite like you in the universe. There has never been anybody like you, and there never will be anybody like you. And so you're right, in a sense, saying that you're unique. The problem is nobody else seems to notice it. And so many of us answer the question, why are we alive, by saying, well, we're alive to try to get other people's attention. We're alive to try to get other people to give us some value to give us some sense of self-worth. Our self-esteem comes from what other people think of us. And we think that we're important. We think we're valuable. But nobody else seems to notice it. So our job is to get other people to notice it. And from our earliest days in kindergarten to our day when we receive the gold watch after 30 or 40 years of faithful service to our company, we're bent on trying to get other people to give us recognition, to acknowledge that we're here, to establish some sense of value. The problem is uh, nobody seems to be able to give us that sense of value. We try and we try, but it doesn't matter how many people we dominate, if we're bosses or if we're directors or managers of operations, it doesn't matter how many little children we tend to get to think we're important, if we're teachers or if we're parents, somehow we never seem to get enough attention. Somehow we never seem to get enough recognition and enough acknowledgement. Somehow we always have trouble with our self-esteem or our sense of self-worth. Somehow we're always seeking peer approval and never getting enough of it. We seem like little cookie monsters who want a pat on the head or a stroke or a cookie and never get enough to satisfy us. And so, in a way, we find ourselves doomed to frustration in answering the question the way we do. And, of course, it is further exacerbated by the fact that we notice how few people now talk about John Wayne, how relatively few people uh, talk now about uh, Richard Burton, how few people now seem to even remember that uh, there was such a person as Anthony Eden. Uh, how few people now talk about Jack Benny or Bing Crosby, in spite of the fact that there was a time when everybody in the country seemed to know those names. They were household names. 
Yet it's amazing when we res reflect now on how few people discuss these people that got recognition. If anybody got recognition, they got recognition. If anybody got approval, if anybody had name brand recognition on the street, it was these people. And yet how few seem to remember them. And of course we realize that when we go to cemeteries and we see the uh, tablets there of stone and the gravestones with names on. And we realize it doesn't matter how hard you try to get people to recognize you and to approve of you and acknowledge you, somehow, finally, you are forgotten. And so we answer the question, we're alive to get people to notice us, but it's amazing how frustrated we begin to feel with that because we never do seem to get final recognition. Finally, we seem to go out like a light and nobody notices us. And yet we cry aloud from the bottom of our hearts, we are important, we are important. Somebody please notice us, we're unique. We know we are. We know somebody should value us. Somebody somewhere should value us. Somebody somewhere in this universe should notice us. And yet it seems very difficult to get noticed. Uh, the society, of course, in which we live continues to make us feel even worse by treating us as a consumer statistic or as a cipher or as a number in a computer. And as mass society becomes more and more mass, as the numbers in this world grow, so grows our frustration at our being treated just as a cipher or a number or a consumer statistic. And we hate more and more the world as it becomes filled with more and more people who are trying to get the same attention as we are. And of course, that's what makes life even worse for many of us because we discover that the other four billion are at the same game. And as we're trying to get recognition, so they're trying to get recognition. And it's not long before we're filled with jealousy and envy of each other because of the attention that somebody else is getting. And of course, the whole... Uh, mass media operates on the basis of that. Indeed, the whole of the world of commerce operates on that basis. Uh, make yourself different. This dress will make you stand out in a crowd. This toothpaste will give you sex appeal and will give you a sense of being unique. This car will gain attention for you. And we know that we're being played upon. We know we're being used. And yet somehow the feeling deep down that we were made to be noticed is so rooted in our very nature that we rise to it. Like the little cooking monsters and the little puppies that we are, we rise to it again and again. Why are we alive to get recognition, to get attention, to get noticed? Those are some of the reasons many of us have for being alive. Some of us uh, don't answer like that at all. Some of us say, well, we don't really know why we're alive, but while we're here, we'd better make things as happy as we possibly can. We agree with you. It's not going to last too long, so we'd better make the most of it while we're here. And we may not es express it in terms of eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, but in a sense, that's what we think. We think, well, we're here to enjoy ourselves. We're here in some way to be happy. And as G.K. Chesterton expressed it, we believe happiness is somewhere between the peace and the calm and the serenity of Walden Pond and the glorious excitement exhilaration of the Arabian Nights. And somehow or other, we should be able to produce that combination. Western man looks not for absolute peace and serenity, because that would bore him to tears, as Pascal said, but he tries also to get some of the excitement and exhilaration of the Arabian Nights without it being absolutely extreme either, because that would bring us such insecurity that we could not bear it. And so some of us say, we're 
Not sure why we're alive, but at least let's be happy while we're here. Next week, I'd like to look at that just a little before we finally begin to approach the answer to the question, what is the 